All right, my name is Austin Stanfeld with Creative Recreational Systems, and today I'm going to be talking about roto molding, rotational molding for commercial playground equipment. <laughs> Whenever I get questions about the cost of these structures, I usually go into the process of manufacturing, the labor, the freight, um, all of the different levels involved with delivering a final product. Roto molding involves a heated hollow mold which is filled with a charge of material. It is then slowly rotated causing the soft material to disperse and stick to the walls of the mold. In order to maintain an even thickness throughout the part, the mold continues to rotate at all times during the heating phase and to avoid sagging or deformation also during the cooling phase. The process was applied to plastics in the 1950s but in the early years was little used because it was a slow process restricted to a small number of plastics. Over time, improvements in the process control and developments with plastic powders have resulted in significant increase in usage. Rotocasting by comparison uses self-curing resins in an unheated mold but shares slow rotational speeds in common with rotational molding. In 1855, R. Peters of Britain documented the first use of biaxial rotation and heat. This rotational molding process was used to create metal, artillery shells, and other hollow vessels. The main purpose of using rotational molding was to create consistency in wall thickness and density. This led to G.S. Baker's and G.W. Perk's process of hollow chocolate eggs in 1910. Rotational molding developed further and R.J. Powell used this process for molding plaster of Paris in the 1920s. These early methods using different materials directed the advancements in the way rotational molding is used today with plastics. Plastics were introduced to the rotational molding process in the early 1950s. One of the first applications was manufacturing doll heads. The machinery was made from an e-blue box oven machine inspired by General Motors rear axle powered by an external electronic motor heated by floor mounted gas burners. In 1976, the Association of Rotor Molders, ARM, was started in Chicago as a worldwide trade association. The main objective of this association is to increase awareness of the rotational molding technology process. In the 1980s, new plastics such as polycarbonate, polyester, and nylon were introduced to rotational molding. This has led to new uses for this process such as the creation of fuel tanks and industrial moldings. The research that has been done since the late 1980s at Queen's University Belfast has led to the development of more precise monitoring and control of the cooling process based upon their developments of the Rotolog system. Equipment and tooling. Rotational molding machines are made in a wide range of sizes. Spindles are mounted on a rotational axis which provides a uniform coating of the plastic inside each mold. Molds are usually fabricated from welding sheets, cast or cut from aluminum blocks with CNC machines. The fabrication method is often driven by part size and complexity. Most intricate parts are likely made out of cast and CNC tooling. Molds are typically manufactured from stainless steel or aluminum. Aluminum molds are usually much thicker than equivalent steel molds as it is softer metal. This thickness does not affect the cycle time significantly since aluminum thermal conductivity is many times greater than steel. Due to the need to develop a mold prior to casting, cast molds tend to have an additional cost associated with the manufacturing and tooling, whereas fabricated steel or aluminum molds, particularly when used for complex parts, are less expensive. Some molds contain both aluminum and steel. This allows for variable thicknesses in the walls of the product. While this process is not as precise as injection molding, it does provide a designer with more options. The aluminum addition to the steel provides more heat capacity, causing the melt flow to stay in a fluid state for a long Longer period. Normally all rotational molding systems have a number of parts including molds, oven, cooling chamber, and mold spindles. The quality and finish of the product is directly related to the quality of the mold being used. The oven is used to heat the part while also rotating the part to form the part desired. The rotational molding process is a high temperature, low pressure plastic forming process that uses heat and biaxial rotation. This produces a hollow one piece part. Critics of the process point to its long cycle times. Only one or two cycles an hour can typically occur as opposed to other processes such as injection molding where parts can be made in a few seconds. 
The process does have distinct advantages. Manufacturing large hollow parts such as oil tanks is much easier by rotational molding than any other method. Rotational molds are significantly cheaper than other types of molds. Very little material is wasted using this process and excessive material can often be reused, making a very economical, environmentally viable manufacturing process. All right, so I hope this video was helpful in understanding more of the process of how play structures are made with the rotor molding process, the plastics, the making of the molds, uh, what goes into the overall cost of a structure. We'll get into more of the different components in other videos like the powder coating of the steel, the steel welding, and other pieces of the play structure. So stay tuned.